Hey guys, it's Ken McElroy. So first I wanted to thank TK and Michelle Stratton, some uh, subscribers to KenMcElroy.com and they graciously donated this whiteboard for us. And so I came down this morning early to prepare what I would call a financial stress test that really all of us are kind of looking at right now. The interesting thing is, is I could have done this video for you guys a month ago and you wouldn't even have watched it. Um, and so I wanted to say that because what happens right now is now that we're all going through this pain together, you know, and we're starting to look at the financial ramifications of this, really a loss of income, then we start to take a look at our expenses. And so we've done that as a company. So I've looked at my own personally, what are my minimum expenses that I need, even though I have a lot of cash flow coming in. And I looked at it as our company, but I also looked at it on our investments. And this is why I'm a cash flow guy, guys, because capital gains are over right now. So you guys have seen the videos on cash flow versus capital gains. It's exactly what I'm talking about for times like this. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to just walk through what I would consider to be a financial stress test um, for all these different things. And so the first thing is we're going to go over your personal situation. And we're going to look at the financial stress test on that. And, and Robert Kiyosaki talks about this being financially free. And the business will look at that stress test. And then lastly, we'll look at our investments on a stress test. And by the way, I've personally done this on all three things in the last two weeks to try to look at where I'm taking the hits, what I'm spending money on that I don't need to be spending money on. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that in this video. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, and this is the personal stress test. And so as you start to look at your income, which for a lot of you, it's salaries, it's you know your payroll or your commissions or whatever it might be, uh, hopefully not draws that you have to pay back, et cetera. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But we all have expenses. And so we're going to walk into that. But after your income uh, minus your expenses, you have your net cash flow. And then from there, you have to take a look at any loans, any debt, any mortgages, or anything that you guys might have that's going to take away from that net cash flow. And this is going to be your actual cash flow. Okay, now you guys have probably seen me do this before, but this is the problem that we have right now, guys, is everybody now, their income is now, a uh, lot for a lot of people, uh, eliminated especially if you're in the service business, you're in the hospitality business, you're in the airline business, you're in the energy business, you're in the retail business, like we're all going through this together. But this is the big thing that I want to talk to you guys about. Okay, so this is a pretty common sense, but I'm sure you guys are looking at this and you're looking at these right now. What can I minimize? You know, what can I live with? What don't I have to live with? Um, so the first part on the personal financial stress test, you need to add up all your expenses. So I would really encourage you guys, I tried to put together just a short list of things. You know, we're all unique. We all have our own stuff going on, but you're, you got your car, whether that's leased, whether that's owned, uh, your rent or your mortgages, your food, your utilities, which is water, sewer, trash, electric, um, gas. You know, we have the internet here. You know, all of those things, you should take note of that, your cable, um, your phone, you know what I mean? Is it leased? Is it owned? Um, your lease payments, whatever that might be, whatever you might be leasing. Maybe you bought a computer on a lease. It doesn't really matter. Your medical, your dental, your insurance, any subscriptions you might have, any memberships, all of that stuff. I really would encourage you guys to sit down and really figure this out because this number is the most important number uh, of what we're going to talk about next. And this is personally. So for me, you know, I went through and took inventory of everything that I have payments on and everything that I don't have payments on. And I'm starting to make choices and decisions based on this too, because this, um, the situation we're all in is impacting everyone, even me. Um, so the, um, so let's just walk through this financial stress test. And this, these are very general numbers. I know a lot of you just put these in your own category. But let's say you have $1,000 of housing expense. And that could be, it could be $2,000, it could be $500, whatever it is, it is, okay? And then you got, let's say, $500 in transportation, which could be Uber, 
It could be a lease payment. It could be gas. It could be whatever it is, all right? It doesn't really matter. I was talking to my trainer the other day, um, you know, because I've got him coming to my house, and he was spending $260 a month on gas to going back and forth to the gym. And the gyms are closed in Arizona, and so now he's, he's like, that's 250 bucks that I don't have to pay anymore. So these are all little things that you should be taking a look at all of these things. And then this category, other, of course, guys, that's, you know, food, clothing, you know, going to things, maybe your subscriptions to Netflix or whatever it might be, uh, your cable, you know, and, and I'm just trying to get you guys to come to a number. This is what we would call, this is what Robert Kiyosaki calls, and this is what we always talk about at Rich Dad, is your, your financial freedom number. What is that number? What's your financial stress test? And um, in this particular case, after you add all this up, um, I just made it easy. I made it $2,000 a month, okay? So the question is, is how can you get $2,000 of income a month to what I would call break even? So what we're trying to do here, guys, is we're trying to break even. You know, if you can, we want to have this break-even number way before times like this. And so as you start to look at this, and this is why I keep preaching cash flow versus capital gains, because we're not going to have a lot of capital gains moving forward, guys. And capital gain means you buy something here and you sell it here, and then you scoop that cash and then you use it to pay your expenses. That's not what we're talking about. What we always say is if you could buy 10 rental properties and they, they produce $200 a month of net cash flow, then you are now financially free as an individual. And so that's what I'm trying to say here. And that's why I always still believe that cash flow is king, cash is king over capital gains. And for a lot of you are gonna say, well, what about renters? Well, I can tell you right now, I've got 8,000 renters and all of them uh, want to stay in their homes right now because of all this uncertainty around the income, okay? And so they're paying us all different kinds of rents depending on where the properties are located, depending if they're student or they're non-student or they have roommates or they don't have roommates or, you know, there's a list of scenarios here, uh, but you just need to plug your own numbers in here. But this is, what we're going through right now is a massive case for cash flow versus capital gain, guys because you're not gonna have that commission. You're not gonna have flipped that house. You're not gonna have that thing that goes up higher and sell it next, next year or next month. You're just not. And so this is, this is strategic investing for cash flow. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to grow um, your income. And so in the, in the short term, once you figure this out, then we need, to, we need to focus on what are the things in these areas here that you guys can potentially cut. And that's what the entire country is looking at right now. We're looking at, you know, can we reduce our housing expenses? Can we sell our car? Uh, a friend of mine the other day decided to sell his truck because he has a $400 uh, payment, okay? And so he made a decision, he's making a decision to trade in his truck for something less because these, these um, car dealers are offering 0% on 84 months. And so he can reduce his car payment, you know, just by $150 a month. And so that's meaningful to him. And um, so there's all these people doing all these things right now. And the, this financial education is a big deal, guys. You can really cut down on a lot of this stuff. And I saw this in 2008 as people started to consolidate. They started to do roommate situations. They started to rent rooms. Um, and, uh, you know, they started to do Uber and they, you know, back in 08, we didn't have Uber, but they started to, um, you know, uh, ride share and things like that. And so there are lots of things that can, you can do right now um, to reduce this number until we get this number back. And so that's the first thing. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to break even. So right now, I'm just trying to help you figure out how you can make $2,000 in income. But in the future, what I really want you to think about is that we're going to go through this again at some point. Maybe it's five years, 10 years, 20 years, don't know. But the point is, is what we want is we want you to have enough cash flow so that you don't have to really cut back in these areas uh, because obviously this, there's a lot of stress uh, with, with all of this right now with all these financial obligations. So the next thing is I'm going to look at it from a business standpoint. And so 
Um, so I looked at my own uh, situation this way, but then the second situation was my business stress test, okay? So this is what you guys are seeing, and this is what we're, we're taking a look at right now. Some of the, you know, on a business standpoint, um, you've got rent, you've got lease payments, you've got mortgages if they bought the buildings, you've got your payroll, you've got all the benefits. And then the other, you've got loans against equipment like copiers and utilities and tax and insurance and food and raw materials if you're making something or if you're a restaurant, you've got food. And so, so as the businesses are taking a look at all these things, as you guys are starting to see people uh, be laid off, these are the reasons. Because right now, the biggest expense, guys, is payroll. And so while it's, it hurts... Uh, individuals that are getting laid off, you, there's, a, there's a business stress test too. And so payroll is the biggest issue typically uh, on running a business. And um, so it's horrible, but this is how, in order for a business to survive, this is what a lot of them are having to do. Um, they're having to cut back in a lot of areas and, so, and other areas too. And so they're trying to restructure loans. Uh, there's never, not really a lot we can do on utilities or taxes. But they're taking a look at raw materials and food costs and all of those things. Um, I actually own a restaurant. And so, you know, we looked at this. We looked at the payroll, um, you know, and we looked at our rent payments and all those kinds of things. Because those are real costs that a business had. And guess what? The income, of course, are the people coming into the restaurant buying food and beverage. You know what I mean? And so that's the next piece. And so the... The business stress test is looking at, as an example, maybe their space is 5,000 a month. It might be 1,000 a month. It might be 20,000 a month. It doesn't really matter. Um, their payroll's 10,000 a month. And all the other things, the insurance and all the copier machines and the telephone systems and all the alarm systems and all those kinds of things that a business has, they have fixed costs. They need 20000 of income in order to break even. So this is what's happening right now, guys, is the businesses are going, okay, this is really, really easy for us right now to cut. But now they're starting to renegotiate with these landlords here. And so they're trying to say, okay, and we can cut down as much as we can to just to survive. But um, this is the immediate thing. And so what I've seen so far is they're letting a lot of the service workers go uh, and they're keeping kind of some of the top management to try to work through some of these things. And so there's all kinds of scenarios of what's happening on the payroll. And it's absolutely horrible. But what's happening right now is these landlords um, are wondering whether or not they're even going to get these payments. They're going to get their mortgage payments, uh, if they can make their mortgage payments, because these, these retail tenants or these restaurants or whatever don't even know if they can make their lease payments. So if a, if a restaurant doesn't pay a lease payment to the, the landlord, then the landlord doesn't have the money to pay the bank. And then the bank has to default. So it's a cascading effect. And there's nothing the landlord can do. And there's really nothing that the business can do unless, again, cash is king, unless they've got cash reserves. And so I talked to one of my friends the other day who has a business who basically all his income went away. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, I've got one year of operating expenses, and that was just my one friend. So he's budgeted for this crisis for one year, so he doesn't have to lay off anybody. And so this is fiscal responsibility from a business standpoint. And so we went through this on our own on a business stress test. And with our company, if we have not had to lay off anybody because I was prepared for this. I was, my business was financially free and I had cash reserves to cover anything that ha might happen like this. Is my income down? Yes, for sure it's down. But I prepared for that. And so we have these cash reserves that we're going to be using. And there's a lot of uncertainty in our business right now. We don't know how long this is going to last. But in my, in my particular business, I have income coming in from lots of different sources. So for my income, I have management fee income coming in on the properties that we own and that we manage. So said another way, I'm the partner and I pay fees to the management company, which is also mine. And so the partner pays fees to the management company to run the management company to produce the financials and produce the distributions and all that to, stuff to our investors. So that's primarily where most of my income is. So again, I control my own income. 
And that's by design. I didn't want to have to fluctuate with the economy. If I'm a flipper and I'm making money on the next house and the next house and the next house and the next house, I might have staff. But once that music stops and once that income's done, then the only thing that they can do is cut payroll. Um, and then they have to negotiate the other things. Um, obviously, if they're, if they're renting um, a space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't matter if it's a martial arts studio, they have a space, they have payroll, if they have a bunch of people on staff, you know, the owners are gonna hunker down and try to keep the business going as much as, as, much as they can, um, but these shutdowns are, are killing everybody even more. And so this is just one more reason why you guys need to understand what a business has to look at from a break-even standpoint, just to stay open. And hopefully we'll see some financial stimulus around all of these things for these businesses. Uh, but right now it's super scary because there's some businesses that don't have any income and they have now 20,000 expenses. And if they cut this, they still have 10 a month. And so the question is, you know, if you have 5,000 in space and 5,000 in other, can you cut anything in the other and can you renegotiate with the landlord? I don't know. That's what's happening right now. I got a lot of friends, some of which you guys have heard on our podcasts and our videos that are in the commercial space. And I called a lot of them and I said, what's happening with you? And he said, restaurants are trying to negotiate with landlords and say, you know, how can I get out of my lease? And, you know, can you give me some forgiveness over the next couple of months while this is going on? And so all these discussions are going on and nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows how much cash these businesses have and which ones are gonna survive and which ones that haven't. And the ones that have the most cash and the ones that were prepared for this are the businesses that ultimately are going to make it through. So that's what a business is going through on a stress test. Now I'm gonna walk you through what we did on all of our individual properties um, individually. So we had to take a look at all, every single asset that we owned. So we had to take a look at the income, we had to look at the expenses, and we had to look at the debt on every single one. And we did what was called an investment stress test on every property. So a 200 unit in Dallas, or a 300 unit in Oklahoma, or a 200 unit in Nevada, or a 400 unit in, in Arizona, they all have different scenarios. They all have different stress tests, and they all have different break-evens, every single one of them. Why is that? That's because payroll can be very different from city to city and state to state and uh, based on the size. Insurance, tax, marketing, utilities, all that stuff is very different as you cross state lines and even from city to city to city. So they all have different operating expense numbers and they all have different debt depending on when we put the debt on. So on some of these, we might have put debt on them 10 years ago. On some of them, we might have put debt on them one year ago. Okay, so what they have is they have different rates different terms, and different face amounts, which are loan balances. So this is all very different, but ultimately every single investment we have, every single property we have, has a break even a number, which is basically operating expenses plus debt. And whatever that is, that's your break even number. And now we're going to calculate it onto our percentage, which is a big call that I had last week with all of our uh, leadership team as we went through every single one of these. And so what we did, we just said, okay, listen, let's stop all capital expenditures right now. Let's stop all renovations right now. Let's keep all our payroll. You know, we're not gonna be able to get rid of tax and insurance. We're really looking at our marketing costs right now, you know, because obviously there's nobody coming in and renting. There's not a lot we can do on utilities, but we can definitely, we can definitely cut here and we can definitely cut here but the truth is, I don't want to cut here, which I have not done. Uh, this and this and this, we don't have any choice. You have to keep insurance. Your property taxes are what they are. They're not going to reduce them. And your utilities are what they are. And so we, each property has a break-even. And so, by the way, I've been watching these break-even numbers for a long time on all of our properties. And as you guys start to load up on debt, so you hear the word, highly leveraged, you know, that's a buzzword flying around right now. What does that actually mean? What this means is that with operating costs and debt, that means that your occupancies have to be super high to cover it. In other words, they've, they've taken out so much debt um, on the investment 
that you have to be super highly occupied. Now that could be any, anything. That could be a retail center, it could be an office building, it could be a hotel. But they all have different scenarios. So on a hotel, a beautiful hotel in Maui, let's say, you might be staying at, their break even might be 85, 90%. In other words, their occupancy might have to be that high just to cover all this, okay? But the one next door, maybe that somebody's owned for 20 years, the break even might be 60%. And a lot of it has to do with how they're running it and what their debt is and when they got it. And so as people started ratcheting up in this, in this economy, they started to load up on debt and uh, they started to do it on the, you know, and the shorter terms means your payments are higher. The longer terms means your payments are lower. The amount that you got, that actually is the real stress test. And of course the rate. So you might have a rate at six, seven, eight, nine percent, which is kind of a hard money loan today. Or you might have a rate at two or three. You know, we just did a 2.75 rate, interest only, 30 year amortization um, uh, for 10 years, interest only. And so, you know, that was all as we were calculating all these operating expenses and all this debt, uh, we we're taking a look at our break even. So I want to know. And all of my managers at all my properties know my break-even dollar amount. It's very, very, very important, okay? So now I'm gonna walk you through an investment side on, on exactly some of the things that you can do and what you should be looking at. Um, so on the investment side, there's two very big things, and this is something I really want you guys to understand. There's what we call gross potential rent, which is, if the, if the property is 100% occupied, no matter what it is, it could be a duplex. You might have two 100%, you have a gross potential rent. So um, if your rents are $1,000 per side, your gross potential rent is 2,000. Okay, if you have four of them, it's 4,000. That's your gross potential. You almost never hit your gross potential uh, because you typically have some kind of vacancy and move out and stuff like that and usually have some kind of normal turnover. But now what we're facing, guys, is this actual collection number. And this is what nobody knows what's coming, okay? So in the next week, we'll know come April 1st and come um, May 1st and come June 1st, how many people are actually going to be actually paying. We don't know this yet, okay? Because we have, in my situation, we have seven, 8,000 tenants that are all walking through the scenarios that we just walked through in the beginning of this video, trying to figure out what they can do. We've had some cases where people just turn their keys in and they go move in with their parents. We've had some cases where they're moving in with uh, a roommate and they're doubling up. And we have some cases where they, they said, we're fine, we're in the healthcare business. Uh, there's some cases where we have Amazon workers and they're just fine because you know, they're, they're super busy right now. So it just depends on the industry, the individual, and all of those things, okay? Um, but the actual collected is super important. So let's say, for example, you have a, a piece of real estate and your gross potential is $10,000, but your actual is eight, okay? So let's say, let's say you're 100% occupied, but 80% pay. That means you got 20% of the people living in your properties that aren't paying, okay? That's a real scenario. Or you might have a 20% vacancy. It doesn't really matter because it only matters on what you collect. So if you have a vacancy, it's probably staying vacant for a while. But if you have an occupied unit with somebody in it that's, that's not paying, so this is a very, very, very important number. And this is what everybody's worried about or concerned about right now. Nobody knows, even my company doesn't know who's gonna show up on April 1st and pay. We just don't know. Now, do we have leases and do we have a gross potential? Of course. Do we have an occupancy? Of course. Our entire portfolio is about 95% occupied, but it's a meaningless number right now. It's meaningless because it only matters on who shows up and actually pays their rent, okay? Because this number here, guys, this 8,000, this is all you have, it, okay? Yes, do they owe it? Yes. Can they pay it? I don't know. This is the point. You have to be real here. You have to be real on what's coming up next. And this, so this $8,000, so this is 80% of the gross potential, right? Okay, now, if you add up your expenses on your individual investments and you add your debt payment and it's, let's say, 8,000, then your break-even 
is 80% collected. And this is what I was all trying to get to. So this 80% collected is your break even. So if you guys collect 7,000 next month, you're negative 1,000. If you collect 9,000 next month, you're positive 1,000. And so that's why this is so important, guys. And that's why you really need to start to take a look at your expenses and you really need to start taking a look at your debt. And so my experience right now has been a lot of banks and a lot of financial institutions are waiting to see who's going to pay. Who's going to pay on that car loan? Who's going to pay on that loan that, I, that they uh, got on a computer? Who's going to pay on rent? Who's going to pay on a mortgage? Who's going to pay you know, on anything that was loaned at all? Okay, so we all don't know. We all don't know the financial impacts that are going to happen. And so the debt piece is going to be super important coming up because my experience has been that there's going to be a lot of people that cannot pay. And so you're going to have these defaults. You're going to have these loan defaults on a small a scale, on a big scale. People are going to default. They're not going to be able to pay their credit cards. They're not going to be able to pay their car payments. They're not going to be able to pay their copier payments at their business. They're not going to be able to pay their mortgage on their house or if it's a second home or whatever it might be on their boat, on their jet skis. It doesn't really matter. The point is you guys are going to start to see a lot of action here because these lenders, wherever they are, are looking for their money. And these people may or may not have it. If they're a business and they have lots of cash, they'll probably stay current. But if they're a new business that's just open, they probably are not, okay? So I was just talking to another friend of mine and they bought a business just four weeks ago and it happened to be a franchise of a gym. And of course, in the state of Arizona, they closed gyms. And so they bought a franchise, they opened it up, they got a retail center, they paid a franchise fee, and now they, it's closed. And so you have all that expense, okay? And they probably financed it, although I don't know their financial situation, but you get the point. And so these debt numbers are going to be super important moving forward. And I'm letting you know that you can restructure debt and you can work with these lenders. And I've been through this before. We ended up buying a lot of properties back in 08, uh, actually about uh, 9, 10, and 11, where when the banks would take back these loans, you know, banks do not, they're not in the business of um, running real estate. They don't want their loans back. It actually is bad for them because when a, when, when a bank uh, lends to somebody and they get it back, it actually gives them a, neg a negative credit rating. So what, you do, what the banks do not want is are these loans back. And that's a good thing. That means they're going to start to work with you. So my, uh, my uh, uh, experience has been that you should be get on the phone with these banks and you should get on the phone with these financial people and you st should start to work on on delaying these debt payments. You should start to work on potentially even lowering these interest rates or stringing them out longer or whatever it might be. Because um, if these are your two expenses and they equal this, um, I'm telling you, if you could cut this to say 1,500 and this to say 5,000, then your break even is 6,500 versus 8,000. All of a sudden, now you're at 65% break even. So you only need to collect 65% of the revenue from your investment, okay? And so all of these things start to make sense. And so what we did as a company is we looked at every single asset and we looked at every single break even scenario on every single asset given the debt and given the expenses. And now we're drilling into the expenses on every single asset to see is it necessary or is it something that's elective. And so we're starting to take a look at all our expenses. And then now we're working on all of our debt. We're taking a look at our rates, our terms, and all of that stuff. And we're getting prepared to sit down with a lot of these lenders and try to figure this out as we try to figure out the million dollar question. And that is, What's everybody going to do with actual collective? You know, what is, um, 
What is the car dealer going to do if you owe them a payment and you don't pay? What is the bank going to do if you owe them a mortgage and you don't pay? What is the copier company going to do if you owe them a payment on the copy machine? All of those things are coming to fruition right now. It's much too early to make any determination. Um, but I wanted you to know, uh, but you need to take a look. at your, If you own investment real estate, this is the number you need to look at, okay? And we've done stress tests at 90% collected, 85% collected, 80% collected, 75% collected, all the way down. And we're taking a look at the worst case scenarios, and then we're taking a look at our cash that we have to cover it. Say, how much cash do we have to cover this property if the occupancy goes down to 75, 70%? And these, are, these are properties that are 95% today, okay? And this is fiscal management. This is what, this is what we're trying to teach here at KimMacRoy.com. We're trying to teach you guys to take a look at all this stuff and build a portfolio of cash flow. Uh, are we going to take a financial hit? Of course we are. Are we going to work with our residents? Of course we are. Do we know who's going to end up paying or not? No. But in the meantime, there's a couple things that I can work on, and that's right here. And you guys need to be super proactive around this, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the financial stress test for you know, personal, business, and investments. Um, the best thing you guys can do is communicate, be proactive with your residents, with your investors, with your lenders, and your employees as you try to figure out all these things because they're going, to be, they're going to be super thankful that you are very transparent. Uh, thanks for watching.